must be performed, but rather as a privilege to be enjoyed, a rare delight that is always revealing some new beauty. Now, let us not wait any longer. Let us begin with the enlightenment of our faith by invoking the blessings of the Lord to be rendered by the Miss Gayatri and team of second year MBA. Kindly rise. Sharade, Daya Palisu, Balanu, Kagisu, Nadegada, Dariali, Nambikea, Nilea, Girisu, Munadisu, Kaididu, Navadu, Padapada, the loose and cherisu. Kindly be seated. Thank you, Gayatri and team. A beautiful smile is the best universal welcome. It can make the day a good day easily. It's our pleasure to be part of the Shinivas family. May I request Dr. Hari Prakash Shopi, Professor, MBA Department, to welcome the gatherings and give a brief introduction of dignitaries. Good morning, one and all. It's my pleasure to be on the stage here today and welcome you all to the inaugural program of today International Conference on Sustainable Innovative Strategies for Business Development in the current scenario organized by Department of MBA. We are happy to have in our midst, Padmashri Alva, Director for Talent and Initiative at M Results as our chief guest, who has accepted our invitation even out of our busy schedule. On behalf of Srinivas family, I extend a warm welcome to you, Madam. I welcome Dr. Habib U. R. Rahman, Faculty, College of Business Administration and Head of Staff Development Unit at Kingdom University, Beharin, Oman, who is in online mode for our conference, who will be delivering the keynote address immediately after this inaugural session. So on behalf of uh, Srinivas Institute of Technology, I welcome him. I take this opportunity to welcome Dr. Gopal Krishnabhat, the head of chemistry department, who is the president of today's function. Welcome you, sir. I welcome Dr. Ajay S. Joseph, head of MBA department, for leading us forward in all our efforts. Well, welcome to you, sir. I welcome Dr. Veena Santosh Rai, the convener of this two-day international program. Welcome. I welcome Dr. Dheeraj, the placement officer to this program. I welcome the HODs of various departments. The real asset of the conference is the authors. We have received an overwhelming response from India and abroad, without whom this international conference would have not been possible to organize. They are in online and offline mode now. 
I am delighted to welcome all the distinguished participants who are a part of this conference. We grace all your presence to the inaugural program of International Conference on Sustainable Innovative Strategies for Business Development in the Current Scenario. It is an honor and privilege for me to welcome you all on behalf of the Department of MBA, Srinivas Institute of Technology, Mangalore. I also acknowledge the gracious presence of various faculty members from different departments. I extend a special welcome to my colleagues who have really made this day possible with their continuous support. I also take this opportunity to introduce the dignitaries on this occasion. I'm happy to introduce our chief guest of the inaugural program, Padmashri Alwa. She is a director, talent and initiative at M Results, a US-based data analytics company. She completed her bachelor's in commerce from St. Agnes College, Mangalore and PGDBA from Symbiosis, Pune. She started her career as a medical transitionist and moved on to being a trainer for students pursuing medical transition. She then realized that her core strength is motivating people and in turn developing talent. Hence, she joined M Results, where she took on different responsibilities, varying from human resource to customer relations. She has also worked with a legal process outsourcing firm for over five years as human resource professional in the legal industry. She believes that the world can be a better place with empathy and compassion. With brief introduction, I again, once again, welcome you. I am glad to introduce our keynote address, Dr. Habib U. R. Rahman, Faculty, College of Business Administration. He is Head of Staff Development Unit at King Kingdom University, Bahrain. He has rendered services in the field of academia in higher education, specifically for more than a decade. He was awarded Doctor of Philosophy in Management a Master of Business Administration from Vishwishira Technological University, Karnataka. He has gained fellow status from Advanced Higher Education, United Kingdom, for his contribution to global higher education. He has also been certified in fin FinTech from the University of Cambridge, England, Artificial Intelligence from Massachusetts Institute of Technology, United States, and Transactional Analysis from Baron Institute, England. Dr. Habib is an active researcher in the area of social science and humanities with this publication of articles in Scopus, AB, DC, and Web of Science journals. Owing to his expertise, he has been invited as a reviewer for various notable journals like Elsewhere, Emerald, Taylor and Francis, Springer, and many more index journals. He is also recognized as PhD examiner for central and state universities of India. Known for his oratory skills, he has delivered more than 100 sessions globally on behavioral science, training pedagogy, personality training, and enhancement programs in association with various academic institutions, NGOs, and corporate sectors. He is also a distinguished member of NGOs and academic institutions. With this brief introduction, once again, I welcome him to this function. It's our sincere hope that all of us will have a wonderful experience with managing to enhance our knowledge and hone our skill sets in the company of fellow participants. Being that much richer in conceptualizing our knowledge, we will assure you all that you will rediscover your strengths in this two days international conference. Once again, a hearty welcome to one and all. Thank you, sir. Flowers don't worry about how they are going to bloom. They just open up and turn towards the light and that makes them beautiful. We are eager to, eager to extend our floral welcome to our dignitaries. Now, I request Dr. Veena Santosh Rai, Program Coordinator, to florally welcome our chief guest. Ms. Padmashri Alva, Director of Talent and Initiative at M Result. Thank you, ma'am. 
Our land does not speak. It introduces itself through its light. Achievers never expose themselves, but their achievement exposes them. I want to take this moment as a gratitude and regard to late Mr. A. Shamarao for a laying strong foundation in the establishment of Srinivas Group and for laying a strong foundation in the establishment of a enabling to achieve the success. The light which enables us to differentiate the good for the bad, bestowing us with the peace, prosperity and harmony. I request the dignitaries to proceed towards the lighting the lamp. Kindly rise. Kindly be seated. Thank you. Sustainable innovative strategies for a business development in the current scenario. Department of MBA of Srinivas Institute of Technology, Mangaluru, have organized two days international conference on a sustainable innovative strategies for a business development in the current scenario. Now, I request Dr. Veena Santosh Rai, Program Coordinator, to further brief about the International Conference on Sustainable Innovative Strategies for a Business Development in the Current Scenario. Honorable dignitaries on and off the dais, a very good morning and greetings to one and all. With great sense of honor, we are extremely grateful to our most esteemed personalities who have won athletes in their respective field. Thank you all for being with us. I would like to express, express my heartfelt gratitude to all of you who are sincerely committed to this international conference to make it a very fruitful one. And it's an honor to address the significance of this international conference to you all. Sustainability consists of fulfilling the needs of current generation without compromising the needs of future generation, while ensuring a balance between economic growth, environmental care, and social well-being. Sustainable approach in every sector has become a major step in saving Earth as well as saving the economy. Today's theme, Sustainable Innovative Strategy for Business Development in the current scenario, focuses on applying the concept of sustainability in the commercial world, be it in the transformation of office buildings to net zero building, marketing energy efficient products, self-sufficient business firms, etc. Tapping into every department, sustainability applies to The initial concept of sustainable development was introduced in the year 1972 and was well embraced as a vision recognizing the interconnectedness of social, economical and environmental issues. Later, sustainable development was developed in the Brutland Commission report in the year 1987 that was published by the United Nations World Commission on Environment and Development. Although Save Earth has been the most familiar sustainability campaign, few of the best sustainability campaigns were marked by the companies like Hyundai, Kia, Levis, and IKEA. Today, we take this international conference as an opportunity to understand and implement this innovative, actionable step 
that companies take to improve their impact on community and environment to bring academicians, practitioners, professionals and research scholars on a common platform for sharing opinion, experiences and ideas about their view on sustainable innovative strategies for business development in current scenario. It is our sincere hope that all of us will have a wonderful experience with managing to enhance our knowledge and hone our skill sets in the company of fellow participants being that much richer in the conceptualizing our ideas. So we will assure you all that we will rediscover your strength in this two days international conference. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Success is the result of perfection, hard work, learning from our mistakes, loyalty and persistence. Now, I request Ms. Padma Shri Alva, Director for Talent and Initiative at M Result, to address the gathering. Very good morning to uh, all of the dignitaries present here on stage, off stage. Uh, students who've been, you know, who've been just watching everything, right? Like witnessing what's happening. Um, and also dignitaries who are, uh, you know, virtually present here. Uh, it's indeed a pleasure to be part of this uh, uh, inaugural ceremony as a chief guest. Now, uh, you know, a couple of months ago, I was at a B school uh, where they had invited me to judge one of their analytics case studies. And, um, you know, they further extended the invitation to be their chief guest for the closing ceremony. And that happened when some other student coordinators were around. So one of the student coordinators said, ma'am, we are actually looking forward to your speech. So I uh, sent, out, sent across a follow-up question to him saying, so what would you like to hear about? You know, what is it that you want to talk, hear about? So he said, uh, ma'am, uh, with all the economic crisis and uh, layoffs that are happening in the industry, we would like to know what is our future? I said, fair enough. So I went back home, I hopped over the whole uh, question that he asked me and then I, you know, backtracked. I, I, I went back to the time I started my career around 19 years ago and um, I was like, I don't remember anything because I was also, you know, at the peak when the whole 2008 recession uh, happened, the IT recession that happened, economic recession and I don't remember anything from there then I realized that my growth has not been sustainable. And unfortunately, I realized, you know, 20, 19 years later, you know, probably a year or two years uh, prior. So why do you think, and let me, let me pose this question to all of you. Why do you think my career was not sustainable? Can anybody answer? Brownie point for the ones who answer. Nobody has an answer. Okay, how many of you have failed? How many of you have faced failures in life? That's all? Man, everybody's a winner here. Most of you are. Slowly hands are coming up. Okay, I see two hands. Yeah, I mean two hands for me as well. That's about it? How many of you are winners? Like won all the challenges that came your way? Academically, personally, mentally. Okay, I see no hands at all. Or did you raise your hand? The lady in the third row? You did not? Okay. So yeah, so I think most of us have failures, right? Yes? That doesn't sound convincing. Okay, wonderful. So why do you think, what did we do when failures came our way? Did we sulk? Did we like throw chairs and we're like, why is my life like this? Did we do that? Did we cry? I cried. None of you cried? Really? The boys I don't hear because boys have always been told boys don't cry, right? It's a human emotion. Right? So, uh, you know, what I realized was I was not in the moment. You know, every time there was a failure, 
i only you know hopped over it saying why is my life like this why is this i did not look at it as a stepping stone see when it's life there's definitely going to, going to be some wins and some failures many failures few wins right but is that sustainable if you sit and say okay this is not my thing you know padmashri alva is asking some question i might make a fool of myself so let me not answer let me just sit here right because you think that you know you might embarrass yourself or you might be called as a failure right or wrong yes no maybe what are you talking do you even listen to yourself yes or no anybody says no okay so everybody agrees with me here right so can i ask you another question and i'm hoping that many of you raise your hands and speak can i yes okay so tell me tell me tell me what is what is not sustainable in my career no answer is a right answer or the wrong answer i can hear some answers louder i have a hearing problem come on all of your mba students here right i thought mba students are supposed to be talkative and aggressive and assertive and you know go getters you all are discussing what are the problems anybody none okay i'm disappointed anywho so yeah so sustainability in my career was uh, like i earlier said that you know i did not uh, i was not mindful about my wins and failures so i think if i was i was mindful about my failures i would have remembered them you know i would have remembered how i actually came across or uh, you know actually uh, charged back at life right but uh, these days also what i realize is every time i speak to students we're only thinking about the future what's in the future what's in the future what's in the future skills change every single day right technologies change every other day now if you think about the future you're losing out on what you're learning right and that is the base you have to get your base really really strong so it's important to think about your future right but it is also important to be in the present because you're missing out so many things so many opportunities if i ask you this question what is the most you know a booming skill or technology now how many of you will be able to answer nobody yes please big round of applause for the gentleman okay data analytics and digital marketing okay. okay fair enough but there are much more other things also which are in the in the industry especially technology you can sit down yeah data analytics you know data is the most important part of our lives right everything runs on data your digital marketing runs on data right that's right but anybody else who wants to try sorry Okay. okay so yeah so i think it's important to also be in the present and mindful about what are the things that are happening right now you know there might be a recession probably there is an economic recession right now at least from the industry where i come from where our uh, clients are mostly in the pharmaceutical and uh, biopharma space we do not see a recession there right but our mind is only going to what's happening in the news which has just been portrayed saying okay there is a economic recession there could be a economic recession i'm not saying no we hired around 20 currently we have around 73 open positions in our organization so can anybody say whether this is you know recession or it's a boom recession or boom right so we are worrying about something that probably is not there right you need to be in this present and also think about your failures embrace your failures and your wins i think that is something that we really lose out in the whole societal pressure that we have because everybody is like oh you have to join this company you have to join that company 
you have to become this you have to earn so much money but how do you, how, is it even sustainable that was the topic of this whole uh, you know two day international event right sustainability before we go into doing what is what else can be sustainable we also have to look at what is self development what sustainable self development tools can we work on right or wrong right so it is important that we work on ourselves first and set a base for ourselves rather than worrying about the future and just not doing anything right and i've seen that quite a bit you know i was at another engineering college and i was uh, presenting a workshop usually my interactions are very interactive i you know i cannot really give a speech especially the ones that are you know that that i have to write down and you know speak i can't most of my speeches are ad hoc and most of the times i want to hear from the audience as well so i was at this engineering college one of the famous engineering colleges in mangalore and then i was talking to the students and nobody was speaking and i asked them and i was like you know what is this what's wrong with all of you why aren't you all talking let's let's get down to the base and say okay what is the problem so some of them said ma'am we are worried that we'll embarrass ourselves ma'am we have insecurities ma'am we think that we'll make a fool of ourselves so my simple example to them was you know i was wearing my heels and you know i was so worried that if i get down i might trip and fall so i said if i had the worry that i might embarrass myself by tripping and falling i probably wouldn't go up that stage and come down the stage right that's how life is as simple as that you just have to take that first leap who's going to remember that you embarrassed yourself you know all of us have had embarrassing embarrassing situations i follow fallen off an auto on my face in mg road right i was embarrassed at that point in time but who remembers now nobody remembers right how many of you have had embarrassing situations in life all of us does anybody remember does that mean we do not take chances we do not take risks yeah sitting here is a risk but you still sitting here not talking is also a risk as much as talking so it's important that we grab the opportunities that are there currently you know the the institute is giving you so many things on your platter when we were studying we didn't have we didn't have google we didn't have instagram we did not have facebook we did not have linkedin we had to figure out things on our own so it's very important that you know we grab the opportunities that we have i think all of you are very lucky to be in this era of education where everything is there but always differentiate between right information that is available online and the wrong information that's where your cognitive ability comes into play don't be a herd following uh, individual yeah that's about it anybody has any questions uh, you know i could always answer your questions um thank you so much and all the best to all of them who are presenting a paper have fun don't think about winning or losing just do your best and that's when the best result comes out thank you thank you ma'am for your excellent message the key to success is to focus on our goals not our obstacles now we request honorable president of today's program dr gopal krishna bhat hod of chemistry department to address the gathering good morning to all the chief guest of uh, the today's function padma shri arwa director of talent and initiatives at m results bangalore region the keynote speaker of the today's uh, conference dr habib you are rahman faculty college of business administration and uh, head of the staff development unit kingdom university bahrain the hod of the mba department dr ajay joseph convener of this conference dr avina santosh hod of the various department faculty members and the participants from uh, various institutions the student friends the conference uh, we are conducting in srit frequently from various departments the department of the mba is organizing the two days conference today and tomorrow the purpose of conducting this uh, type of conference to share the ideas new work that is invented by the scholars so that we can exchange the idea we can share the idea so that we can 
update ourselves for the future. So keeping in this view, in our Srinivas Institute of Technology, we started to conduct the conference for the benefit of the participants from outside and for the students. Even we are conducting the FTP, that is the faculty development program, to upgrade the knowledge in the various fields. So the department of the MBA has taken a, a very good initiative and taken a very very good work from the last uh, two to three months, I think they have worked to conduct uh, this type of conference. It's not uh, very easy to conduct uh, the conference uh, within a day. So from the uh, last uh, two to three months, they worked. Even the students also helped uh, a lot. So I would uh, congratulate the Department of MBA to taking the initiative to conduct uh, this type of conference. So in this regard, uh, for uh, the inaugural function, we have requested uh, the chief guest, the Padma Sri Alwa, to be here. So, Madam has accepted our invitation for uh, gracing this occasion. So, I thank uh, on behalf of the Sino Sister Technology for being us today, yes, Madam. Also, the keynote speaker will be joining uh, after the function in online mode. This conference will be held in the hybrid mode, it is online and offline. So the participant are participate, presenting their papers in the online and offline mode. For uh, the benefit of the participant, we planned the session in the online and offline mode. So I thank the keynote speaker, Dr. Habib Yuar Rahman, for accepting our invitation and to give the keynote address in this conference. I thank the Havim, you are Raman also. The conference will be fruitful only when there is a very good participant. So when you invited the participant from various institutions, we have got a very good response. Around 40 plus papers we have received from various institutions. They are going to present their papers today and tomorrow. So, I wish all the best and have a fruitful day in SIT or those who are presenting in online also, they can enjoy because all the sessions we are discussing in online. So I wish all the best in the conference. I request the students to grab the things from this conference. I mean, you are the PG students. Now after PG, you may be going to search the new things. If you are doing the research work, you have to search the new things in your field that you have to present it. So I think you'll get uh, the idea of the preparation of the pa papers by attending uh, this type of conference. I wish uh, all the best for the students also for uh, attending this conference and grab some things from this conference. And finally, I want to thank the organizers to give me opportunity to be in this function because uh, today our principal Dr. Srinivas Maya is on leave. So Sir has told to be the president of the function. So I thank the principal and I thank the organizers for uh, inviting me and to be a part of this program. Thank you. Thank you one and all. Thank you sir for your valuable words. Memory can change the shape of a room, it can change the color of a car, and memories can be distorted. They are just an interpretation, they are not a record, and they are irrelevant if you have the fact. We express our gratitude and heartfelt thanks to our chief guest for joining us today and for sharing her thoughts with us. Now, I request Dr. Ajay S. Joseph, HOD of MBA department, to present the memento as a token of her love and appreciation. Thank you, sir. As we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. Once again, we express our gratitude to everyone for joining us today and making this program a grand success. 
Now, I request Professor Stephen Robert Ellis, Faculty of Department of MBA, to propose the vote of thanks. Honorable dignitaries, one and of the dais, I take this opportunity on Department of MBA to present the vote of thanks. On this happy moment, we are glad to have Padmasri Alwa, Director of Talent and Initiatives, as the chief guest. She has, she has accepted our invitation and present on this day. So on behalf of the Department of MBA, I wholeheartedly thank you, ma'am. I thank Dr. Gopal Krishnam Bhatt, who is the president of today's function in the absence of our principal. So I thank him for joining us on this. I take this opportunity to thank Dr. Ajay Joseph, the HOD of the Department of MBA for his gracious presence. So thank you, sir. On this beautiful day, I also thank Dr. Veena Santosh, the coordinator of this program for being with us on this day. So thank you, ma'am. I also thank the students, the faculty members from various departments, HODs for gracing this occasion and my colleagues on this beautiful day. So thank you. And lastly, I thank all the participants who are in online as well as in the offline mode for gracing this occasion. So thank you one and all. Thank you, sir. The formal program comes to an end. I request the program coordinator, Dr. Veena Santosh Rai, to escort the dignitaries Dr. Habib, you can now come on the screen. Just enable your video and you can come on screen. Yeah, yes, uh, yes. I, I just on now. Good morning. I hope I'm audible. So may I request Dr. Habib Rahman, Faculty, Kingdom University, to deliver the keynote address. Uh, thank you. I, I hope I'm audible to all. Uh, can you just come from that? Dr. Veena, I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm a audible. Sir, you are audi audible. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, uh, distinguished guests and colleagues, uh, scholars, students, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good morning. I am uh, delighted to be the part of uh, this international conference on uh, sustainable strategies for business, uh, business development uh, in the current scenario. Uh, when Dr. Veena has approached me uh, to deliver a keynote address, I was uh, quite happy and uh, I can notice many talks going on about sustainability. So at this outset, I would like to express my sincere gratitude uh, to the organizers for uh, considering me as a keynote speaker of the day. Colleagues, 
sustainability uh, is a hot topic these days. I think it seems that uh, today everybody has uh, embraced sustainability, be it firms, be it government or uh, citizens. Everyone is talking about sustainability buzz. In the context of business, uh, sustainability is also known under one of its many related terms, such as, uh, you know, corporate responsibilities, uh, shared value creations, and very importantly, uh, you know, inclusive capitalism and social plant enterprise, uh, so and so forth. So as an academic, you might uh, expect me to, you know, uh, distangle all these uh, different terms but I would just say, uh, forget about the academic uh, stuff, because in essence, all these terms boil down to sustainable development. The term, which was coined in 1987 by United Nations Commission, someone told, uh, you know, uh, during this inter you know, inauguration address, the commission which was held by by uh, Grun Butland defines that she, she was the commission. She was the chair of the commission. She rightly defines sustainable development as a meeting the needs of the present, uh, without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. Yes. In other words, but you can have your have share of the pie, pie, but you ha you should also leave enough for others, so that they can have there as well i think that's quite an interesting statement you know sustainable development is sometimes misinterpreted as uh, saving the planet uh, forget about that that planet will easily outlive uh, you know humanity it is rather about us saving us from ourselves uh, by wisely managing natural resources so, so this sustainable development, yeah. you know, is also about a social about inclusion, inclusion. Uh, making sure that, 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 that the sections of the society, the marginalized sector especially, will have equal uh, access uh, in job opportunities and they yeah. will be elevated out of poverty because this is one of the key, key. Uh, strategic development, uh, you know, goals of the United okay. Nations. So, so, United Nations agenda, yeah. I hope all of you are quite familiar with. Yeah. In 2030, yeah. we are going to reach, reach, or we are going to achieve the sustainability as per United Nations. There is no doubt about global sustainability but issues, uh, you know, have no. become a no. defining issue, uh, not only of a, our time, uh, for uh, future generations, we face many challenges. One of the challenges which we recently encountered was COVID-19 pandemic. This COVID-19 pandemic has affected a lot in the implementation of uh, sustainable development goals. You know, much of the progress made on sustainable development so far has been, uh, you know, pushed back, or we can say it has been delayed. Uh, because of this pandemic, the the, the road to recovery, uh, you know, from the pandemic, will be a long one. However, it also offers, uh, you know, as an opportunity to create a more sustainable and more inclusive society. You know, we need to ensure that the world that emerges from the crisis is more sustainable than the world that entered it so this is this can be considered as an opportunity for us so the 2030 agenda yeah. is the most ambitious agreement on sustainable development you know ever adopted by the world leaders it has brought us uh, you know a long way i'm just reminded you know of the words by, said by someone who said, uh, I, I just quote what they said, uh, you know, no matter how much ground we have covered, it does not give us 
was a right to stop. To stop. Colleagues, the question remains, remains. how and whether we will achieve the sustainable development goals of 2030 agenda in time. time. Because the goal were adopted by the world leaders in 2015, I hope some of you might have noticed, with the aim of their contribution towards, uh, you know, socially, economically, uh, as well as uh, environmentally sustainable uh, environmentally. development and being attained by 2030 in all the countries of the world. I'm not going to, you know, read out all these sustainable points. Point. The strength of the 2030 agenda, we have 17 goals, as you could see on screen, I hope, and 169 targets <laughs> lies in the way that, you know, that they, they, they clearly show how different areas of development influence and, you know, and, uh, which impact each other. There are a couple of agenda which we are going to address today. I hope this conference is going to achieve some of the agenda which the United Nations has proposed. You know, either it could be poverty or it could be, uh, you know, health or quality education or, you know, reducing inequalities. Uh, you know, business world has uh, many responsibilities to address this. Through business, what, what I'm going to discuss today I'm going to more, give more focus on today is the area where I am into uh, the research as in a couple of you know projects where I'm working with different grants where those works will be discussed here so that uh, I believe that I have the authority to discuss because I'm, I'm directly working with these kind of projects. Uh, colleagues, you might have noticed uh, you know, yes, the percentage yes. of the executives no. thinks sustainability is important. Fair enough. Fair enough. But only 60% of the companies have a sustainability strategy. I think we have challenge here. Often companies that speak of being sustainable are lacking when it comes to implementation. You know, one of the reasons I believe this is happening because of the CEOs and the corporate boards are not as engaged as they should be. Uh, with these sustainable strategies. Uh, you know, the starting a business uh, to make the world more sustainable can only uh, highlight someone as a hero. Uh, but it is also can provide a lot of wealth. And the best examples I could quote is an Elon Musk, uh, who, pro you know, proved by becoming the world's richest person. The world is facing with uh, over exploitation of resources. Uh, I was recently reading a report of McKinsey's, which having a sustainable strategy. The report says the sustainable strategy allows a company to make a long-term investment. And when it comes to a sustainability, the, one of the most dangerous is a do-nothing approach, which can and mean a bigger loss in the future. The many corporate leaders, uh, you know, are, are, are becoming aware of the need to reuse and recycle and and are moving towards uh, what is uh, you know famously known as a circular economy because uh, this is a huge area of growth as well as uh, you know with a renewable energy market which is expected to be uh, if i'm not wrong the figure is two point you know approximately two and a half million dollar by 2000 uh, 2025 we're going to reach uh, soon. So another important domain where I'm working uh, is the banking sector, the banking and insurance sector, how the sustainability uh, is happening over there, like and how the bank is exactly having a plan to bring a sustainability over there. Uh, because sustainability in banking and insurance uh, is one of the uh, crucial because of uh, it's very importantly it aligns with the financial institutions with the very broader goals of creating, uh, you know, what we call a sustainable future. Uh, this means that the banks and insurance companies, you know, uh, they need to consider three important factors, which a couple of the uh, guests of the day, to, uh, you know, they repeated the environmental, social and governance. We, we, we call it as ESG factors uh, when making business decisions. So banks are increasingly offering loans and financing the green projects such as like renewable energy or energy, uh, you know, officially projects. 
uh, sorry, uh, what's it called? The energy efficiency projects, which we have a couple of uh, such kind of projects in India and abroad and many, many parts of the world. So this type of financing, uh, you know, uh, supports in the transitions, uh, what, we, uh, what the, the, the major agenda of this entire project is low carbon economy and helps to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emission. So many financial institutions, uh, you know, uh, which are integrating this ESG uh, factors into their investments and uh, uh, the lending decisions. So this means considering the environmental, social and governance factors, you know, when evaluating, uh, you know, the potential investments or uh, the lending opportunities. There are several examples we can quote uh, out of the research outcome what we had, uh, you know, the several research, you know, you know, leading insurance companies, they have adopted their products uh, for a greater sustainability uh, by aiming to reduce the, what we call a protection gap and increase loss prevention and support the green transitions. For example, if you see the social insurance rates uh, for uh, especially these energy efficient buildings or even for the car uh, with the, you know, recycle parts, all and and even the constructions properties and industrial risk as well they increase the support to the energy industry which is uh, focusing on renewable energy constructions and uh, you know generation activities in 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 the country where i am uh, you know working where we are investing a lot for even the green campus in the universities and we are getting uh, support from the you know, financial institutions uh, in order to enhance in order to develop a green campus just imagine a uh, country like uh, you know Middle East, uh, which is uh, uh, you know I hope those who visited Middle East you are aware of the temperature here, uh, which is also concentrating on go green concept, uh, which is uh, investing a lot on, especially the universities and uh, many you know companies are in you know converting their building as a green building. Another important uh, place where we have to focus on is sustainability you know in 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 harnessing the human capital uh, because we had a research on 2021 uh, you know which talks about about the potential for the organizations to design a good job the concept of good jobs uh, in which job quality is high workers have a voice and the organization offers training and skill development. You know, within the context of sustainability, the good jobs look more like a holistic approach to work, where the health, you know, safety and the well-being of the workers are prioritized and where the work output contributes to uh, sustainable, you know, sustainability outcomes. For example, if you take some companies make a regular you know, evaluations of labor conditions and wages and training and uh, the environmental impact of the, you know, factories within their supply chain to ensure that working conditions meet their uh, social responsibility standards. Uh, you know, even in, while in 2021, the organizations even reframed their mission statement. It is quite interesting, you know, reframing their mission statement because it's not simply reframing their mission statements because they're committed to do that and they're accountable to do that. They're supposed to submit a record to the regulators that how far they're committed to do that, uh, to, to adopt, uh, you know, the concept called people first focus uh, on the environmental sustainability, which is promoting both safety, uh, you know, uh, what is it called? Safety environmental practices as well as safe work environments. So they're going to achieve these two uh, agendas. So here the organizations are more committed to align their sustainable goals by arranging budgets uh, to provide them with the training and make periodic audits and et cetera. You know, the commitment means here, uh, the regulators will be monitoring them, how far you are, uh, you know, reserve budget for them. Uh, what, what, what how, how many percentage of the budget has been kept, uh, you know, reserved uh, to train your employees in order to meet these objectives. There was, a survey which was conducted here. The survey uh, which was focused on, uh, you know, Generation Z as well as millennials, uh, which was, you know, you know, quite interestingly, we got the outcome of the survey 
uh, in that particular research was nearly half of the respondents said they have personally put pressure on the organizations to act on sustainability topics. And 30% of the workers said they would consider switching jobs uh, to work uh, for, the, for, for a company that are more environmentally sustainable. You know, here the companies are focusing, you know, more incentives and uh, funds are given. Even in case of an academic, uh, the researchers like us, we're getting funds from uh, different institutions and regulators. If we are, you know, engaging in sustainable related uh, uh, research topics, like the conference which you are doing right now in Sydney University Institute of Technology. So the more encouragement has been given for people if they are, are opting for sustainable related topics and it's not simply doing research we're supposed to come to conclusions we're supposed to give a solution for certain problems and you know so that that will help to the regulators to implement in their plan it's not only you know individual or it's not only an employees it's even the big giants big companies are doing that apple is one of the example we can quote i hope all of you know this global technology company uh, which added a modifier uh, you know, of its bonus structure. That's quite interesting, like which could increase the bonuses for an executives by 10 percentage uh, should they, if, if they achieve predefined sustainable goals. It's more focusing directly into the performance appraisal, uh, you know, aspects. Colleagues, two things are the obstacles uh, in that survey. One of the major obstacles uh, while they, you know, conducted survey is a fund. Another one is the culture the mindset so it is a great deal to change the mindset the organization is investing uh, you know in order to change the mindset of the people regardless of the you know ultimate benefits whatever we are receiving many organization they tend to struggle uh, to prioritize the needs of a long term sustainability over a short term financial results because while the culture and funding seems uh, has been considered as a top barriers they'll also have to work on, uh, you know, in order to help to achieve the future success. The third important point, uh, which is the technology, because uh, the current generations, I hope many of the audience are MBA students who are pursuing their MBAs, we call them budding managers. So you are much too much familiar with the technology because there are latest studies have found that more than 70% of the global consumers are willing to transform their consumption habits to mitigate their environmental footprints. Like for, for you know, uh, for, for constantly uh, striving in the com you know, competitive world, like business are, you know, they're required to provide those services, uh, you know, which usually leverage not only the consumers, but also the environment. For instances, like uh, the worldwide energy usage, uh, if you just take the, uh, the, the data which projected to grow by nearly 50 percentage uh, by 2050. So people are investing, companies are investing in green energy, you know, that is accessible and clean, as well as uh, very importantly, affordable and finally sustainable, so that it becoming the priority of the organizations and the people. So all these leading companies, uh, when the chief guest of the day was asking, uh, the technological part, like which is the booming technology, a couple of students answered about uh, data analytics and everything. So, you know, all these, you know, technologies are accelerated to sustainable goal. For example, if you take even Internet of Thinking, IoT, what we call uh, data analytics, as some has answered here, and, uh, you know, sensors, which is facilitating, uh, you know, all these are concentrating to decarbonize the industrial operations and Uh, which will be, uh, which has to be quoted here, otherwise it will be incomplete is uh, artificial intelligence here. Uh, because uh, the, the role of technology in sustainability uh, is like, you know, uh, which, which will be fulfilled with the help of artificial intelligence, which is essentially changing the way we think, the way we live. You might have noticed uh, many companies are going to bring a different digital uh, transformations across the world. The way we work has changed. The ba many banks, uh, they are, you know, they already implemented AI, machine learning, ML, and uh, augmented realities, all these kind of technology uh, to completely change the, uh, you know, the uh, external world. In the business operations, and the process can be optimized uh, with the help of AI system. 
Uh, and while companies are using AI, you know, uh, especially their focus is on three things, uh, enhance the efficiency, number one, and productivity, what we call output, and very importantly, lower the energy cost. And finally, this is another important research which currently we are undergoing with a couple of my colleagues, is uh, you know, sustainable development and social entrepreneurship and social enterprise. How can we bring sustainability with the help of social enterprise, which is uh, very important, uh, of the, uh, and we can also call the need of the hour. Because social entrepreneurship, uh, I, I rather call it as a movement rather than an industry. You know, it's, it's a movement uh, that has gained a remarkable uh, momentum over the last few years. A social entrepreneurship, you know, social entrepreneurship can have can be characterized by the adoption and what we call a practice of several principles. Uh, very importantly, uh, social enterprises can, uh, you know, they apply business and uh, management principles to solve the social problems. You might have noticed when I just displayed the 17 objectives, the goals of, uh, you know, strategic development goals of United Nations, one of them, one of the first priority which they have given is poverty. Uh, so certainly there are many examples uh, which we can see the social enterprise because of the social entrepreneurships, they, the, the, the poverty, the rate of the poverty has been reduced and it has been proved uh, when we, you know, tested with the help of various tools and research. So especially with the government, because when you say the social entrepreneurships is useful, uh, where the government and markets have failed or where, uh, you know, there are certain unmet needs are there. Second important agenda, social entrepreneurships or social entrepreneurs are emphasized the development of efficient, especially this affordable as well as the cost effective solutions, rather than, uh, you know, just putting some dreams. So we see the social entrepreneurship as, as a valuable addition, or rather we can call it as a toolkit of United Nations, not only United Nations, even other multilateral agencies uh, in their missions for a sustainable development. So there are, you know, you know, these development agencies which are helping to create this ecosystem, uh, ecosystem which supports all the social entrepreneurs to grow as well as uh, flourish. Since they uh, already have an extensive uh, international networks uh, with many NGOs or many institutions uh, and, uh, you know, all these development agencies can provide a, a great platform, uh, you know, uh, to connect the social entrepreneurs internationally. And also they can connect to the investors or especially this venture philanthropist uh, and uh, academics enable, uh, you know, exchange of experiences and trainings and inputs, perhaps uh, this even promoting them to collaborate among different parties. So the United Nation is the best example, which is already uh, has its own, you know, what is what we call it as impact fund, you know, uh, even the Asia Development Bank's ADB, I hope you, you, most of you heard about this. It's an inclusive business, you know, initiative which which proposes many inclusive uh, business initiatives. So these could be, uh, you know, uh, built upon to create a platforms or a hubs for uh, interactions and uh, uh, growth in 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 the spirit of uh, uh, strategic development units of 1970. <clears throat> so. Uh, 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 Strategic units of 70, 17, sorry. So, uh, colleagues, uh, the the 2030 agenda uh, is about what we must achieve together, and it is about you know what kind of the world we will be leaving to generation to come. A world that is for everyone and provides more equitable opportunities for all. You know, we, we, we now need to stop up our work for on all friends and for the sake of our children, uh, you know, for the sake of hope or for the sake of future. Uh, there is a great, uh, uh, you know, we, we say that the plants are uh, protect the air and water and, you know, uh, wilderness and the wildlife are in fact plants to protect a man. So we have a great deal of, uh, you know, commitment. Uh, finally, uh, I hope I'm on time. Finally, I would like to uh, recall the words of once so wisely said, one of my most favorite person, personality, Nelson Mandela, 
and I quote what he said, it, is, it always seems to, uh, you know, impossible until it's done. So with this note, I would like to conclude and extend my gratitude for your cooperations. And uh, before I wind up, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Veena and uh, the entire organizing committee for your invitations. And uh, my keynote speech will be incomplete without acknowledging uh, the contribution of Dr. Rashmi Kodikal, Professor of Dafika University, for sharing her valuable support and ideas to deliver this keynote address. So thanks a lot. If there is any questions, we can have an interaction. Uh, so let me take this opportunity to thank Dr. Habibur Rahman from Kingdom University for sparing his valuable time and energy in explaining to us about sustainable innovative strategies for business development. Uh, to have sustainable innovative strategies is a big work because business and sustainability are uh, opposing ideas. So, so therefore, Sustaining the environment for the future is a big challenge for all the people who are uh, developing business in the long run. So I thank you, sir, for sparing your time. Thank you very much. I take this opportunity on behalf of Srinivas Institute of Technology, Department of MBA, for sparing your valuable time with us and opening uh, this uh, conference with your keynote address. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. So first session of this international conference will be post lunch uh, at 1 p.m. So I request all the uh, participants who are going to present be ready at uh, 1 p.m. for the presentation. So thank you.